The New Testament account of Jesus' arduous day of crucifixion meshes credibly with locations in Jerusalem even today. His journey of exhaustion, sleeplessness, and thirst began here on the western hill of the city on Mount Zion. Jesus knew that these people wanted to kill him, physically dragging him about the city in their ill-conceived plan, but God's plan transcended it. These Roman foundation stones may have formed the first synagogue church of the apostles and early Jewish messianic believers. While compelling but unproven, the Torah niche inside is oriented to Golgotha and not to the Temple Mount. When Jesus summoned his 12 disciples to the upper room to celebrate the Passover together, little did they know what the day would bring. Without their families, the apostles spent their last hours with Jesus, realizing that one of them would betray him, and then they would all scatter. It must have been frightening to anticipate Jesus' imminent departure and was not a peaceful time as portrayed by many paintings. On his way to the Garden of Gethsemane, these stairs from the period led down from Mount Zion into the Tyropean Valley and to the Mount of Olives. At Gethsemane, or in Hebrew, Gethsemane Olive Press on the Mount of Olives, Jesus agonized to bear the sins of the world. The ancient trees mark the area. The graphs date from the Crusader period, but the root stalks could be up to 2,000 years old. Jesus probably slept in the cave of the olive press and not in the orchard on that chilly spring night. So while many visit the Garden of Gethsemane, an olive press from the era is still in situ. It possibly witnessed Jesus' betrayal by Judas when the temple officers and Roman soldiers took him away at night. As he returned through the Kidron Valley, which became the literal night walk to death, perhaps Jesus thought about King David's 23rd Psalm, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil, for your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They hauled Jesus back and forth by torchlight through steep, rough terrain. This journey backtracked to Mount Zion to the family home of the high priest Caiaphas' house, probably up the same steps that Jesus had descended a few hours earlier. At this house, archaeologists found the ossuary bone boxes of the Caiaphas family. Also, in proximity beneath is a pit, which so closely resembles the words of the psalmist. You have put me in the lowest pit, in dark places in the depths. Your wrath has rested on me, and you removed my acquaintances far from me. They accused Jesus of blasphemy, while Peter denied him three times, just outside. Maybe the officials wanted to avoid people and did not take the easiest path, so they took him to the Temple Mount. Here at the Chamber of Hewn Stone sat the ruling Sanhedrin of the Jewish leaders who rejected Jesus as Messiah. Without the authority to execute, they sent him to the Praetorium, where the elite guards resided in Castle Antonia, Roman procurator Pontius Pilate did not have religious authority. Declaring Jesus innocent, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas at the palace near Jaffa Gate. Returning to the Praetorium, the final sentence against Jesus was decreed. Jesus carried his cross through the streets of Jerusalem in the way of sorrow to the site of the Holy Sepulchre. This gate of judgment led directly to the scarp outside the city wall. Historically, the Holy Sepulchre was built over the site of the crucifixion, over successive buildings from the time of Hadrian in the 2nd century. After beatings, mockeries, and gambling for his clothes, the soldiers crucified him on Golgotha, the place of the skull, to die as a substitution of sin for all mankind. The graves from the period demonstrate that this location was outside the city wall. 
His body was taken down by Joseph of Arimathea and laid in a tomb nearby. The Gospel records that on the third day he rose again. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds you were healed.